Hello, welcome to my shop again. Well, today we're going to do a natural edge opening to a hollow form. And we'll do this piece with a natural edge. Happens to have a void in it also. We'll show you how I plan the burl in order to capture a nice balanced natural edge like this. Usually burls will have a a rough area <clears throat> and if I've got a void that's big enough I can start a vessel by using that area for my mouth opening. There are some other kinds of burls that are just kind of gnarly and don't have a lot of of uh, separation in lobes or, or uh, voids in them. So in this case, I would do a shape that has a neck on it to take advantage of the gnarly surface. So I'm going to do this approach here with a neck on my vessel because I don't have a significant void in the piece that I'm working with. Okay, let's get started. Let me show you what I'm working with here. I've got a, a cherry burl that I cut a couple pieces out of a pretty large burl, so we'll show you what we have here. The first one is the, the one I'm going to work with. I drilled a uh, Forstner bit hole in here just to give me some movement for my live center and drive center so that I can start between centers. Have another one on the other end so that I have my axis established. Kind of before I started I put it at uh, kind of between centers to figure out where I wanted to start. Now this has a relatively flat area here that lends itself to a neck and so that's what I'm going to do with this is, is put a neck on this. Uh, there's no uh, deep void that's big enough to start with the hollow form opening coming undercutting a shoulder. So uh, we're going to use this top surface to make a, a neck around my vessel to uh, uh, keep a natural edge flow and have no remnants of the opening. Another piece of the that the other end of that same tree had a significant void in it. And now I can undercut a shoulder into that void, make a different shaped opening. So it depends on what kind of a burl that you have. All right, now I have it mounted uh, between centers. And you see it's pretty wacky, wobbly piece of wood, but that's okay. We'll get it round soon enough. When I make a rim, a neck, I'm going to have not a really high spot on one spot and a low spot on another. It's going to be relatively equal on both sides uh, around there. I'm going to have a, quite a variety of shape, but the overall balance of that top edge is going to be fairly equal. I don't have one high spot and, and all the rest low. Just start to rough this out now. I have the axis that I want that's going to accomplish my goal here of a natural edge rim. Now I'm going to prepare 
a holding method. I'm going to use a glue block at this point because I don't want to waste away any wood with a, a chuck tenon and I never use chucks anyway because they're a weak link. But uh, I'm going to use a glue block so that I can use 100% of this or 95% of it anyway as far as the height goes. concave surface there and enough surface for my glue block. Uh, I don't have 360 degrees but as a small vessel like this I'll have enough room to put my glue block on here. All right now I've got it on my glue block ready to uh, get into my final shaping. I like to have the neck capture a large percentage of my wobbly rim. I don't want my rim to be down in the bulbous shape of the vessel. I want the rim to be in the neck. And that's just a preference for me. There's no right or wrong there. But it's something that I look for sometimes if possible. And this vessel is going to give me that. So I really like the way this is working right now. The largest diameter is going to be here on the higher quadrant. And I'll tuck this back in and make the, the uh, foot small. I'm going to have to do that to get rid of my chainsaw cut here. And you can see where that shape would develop right here. That's where my chainsaw cut is. So I'm just going to have to take some more of this out of here to get down there. But I really kind of liken that shape already. Let's shear scrape this, get it nice and clean so that I don't have to sand much. We'll get into hollowing. And I'm only going to hollow the first stage up to here. I didn't take this wood away because I don't want the, the wood to flex and vibrate. When I get this foot down smaller, then I'll finishing, finish the hollowing inside. So I did stage one on the outside here. Stage two is hollowing out the top quadrant. Stage three, I'm going to finish this where it's going to sit down to where it's going to sit on the table. Stage four, I would clean up and finish hollowing the inside of that little bit of a bottom that's left. Okay, let's start hollowing. I have my captured hollowing system, so it's all stable. I just sit here with my fingertips, and the laser is going to help me measure the wall thickness and show me where I'm at in there. I'm not working blind inside the hollow form anymore. I'm using the Hunter nanograin carbide. It's the sharper carbide, and I am also have it dedicated on an angle. So it's slicing through the fibers instead of scraping. And so I have two advantages here. I'm slicing with a very sharp tool. Okay, we have the outside done in the first quadrant. And we've drilled a drill hole partway in there. So the first thing I'm going to do is we're going to hollow out a cylindrical hole. The cylinder is a shaving relief thing, so we're going to let the shavings kind of fall out. They're not going to fight us. 
Okay, these voids here, I got the speed of the lathe up, probably uh, 12, 1400, 1500 RPM, because it's a small vessel here. I'm just going to sneak up on that surface with my fingertips. We're going to listen to it first. There's that inside wall. So we're just going to take it slow and easy. There's no bouncing. The air spaces go by. It's so quick, you can't even feel it. You can hear them, but you can't really feel it. I go into the hole. In the middle. Just make a nice cylindrical shape. Right, we're going to now undercut the shoulder and start to make our wall thickness. I'm going to put the laser on. I'm going to have the long line in the area that I'm going to work here. We're going to set a gap. The gap between the laser and the cutter is going to be my wall thickness. So we're going to do, oh, maybe about a eighth of an inch wall thickness here. I don't want to make it too thin because uh, of the natural edge and voids and things it would be weak it's a dot when it's on top <clears throat> then it gets elongated that gives me a warning it says slow down and then when the laser disappears the gap is left behind it's still flickering when it's on intermittent intermittent air spaces of the voids Then when it's dropping off and shows on the bed of the lathe, then I know I'm at my wall thickness. Now I take a deep breath and just with my fingertips we're going to clean up any little two marks left behind. This is uh, very easy just like taking a pencil and writing a curved line on a piece of paper. Very delicate. Clean up the two marks and move on. So now that I've gone in there three stages, you can see that wall thickness is nice and uniform. The laser's doing that for me. And you can't cheat when you have a void like that. You've got to keep it uniform or it'll look funny. Now that top quadrant is done on the inside. Uh, the outside shape, I'm not going back there. The inside is already uh, done and measured to the wall thickness so now we're just going to finish what is stage three on the outside shape all the way down to where it's going to sit on the table it's a nice curved line here that matches the top shape when i'm doing this you see my pace is very slow when i take my last cut I'm going to get a brand new sharp edge and take a nice cleaning up cut all the way down to the bottom, swinging my handle slightly so it makes a curved line. And we clean up the tool marks, any little ridges or bumps with shear scraping. Very, very delicate. Look at the little angel hair shavings on the tool rest. Okay, now we're going to reset the laser with this little bit in here, another inch or so I have to hollow. My goal here at this point, I want the drill hole to go away, be gone, and the sidewall to be done. Alright, 
now I point the swivel right straight towards the headstock, set the laser now with no gap, and then I know exactly where I am inside there. The laser set with no gap now at the bottom. I can see exactly how deep I am and see the shape of the bottom. Just want to go kind of flat across the bottom for a little bit. Okay, that's where it's going to sit on the table here. I'm just going to part this off in the waste wood a little bit so that I can reverse this and clean that bottom up nice with a slicing cut. I don't want to part it off where it's going to sit on the table, uh, especially with the burl and dry wood. A parting tool is going to rip it all up. So I want to reverse this and clean that bottom off. Even then, I never part it off completely. Cut it off with a saw. All right, I have a padded waste block on here, so I'm capturing that on the outside and not on the inside. I never put anything on the inside of my hollow forms. I'm always capturing it on the outside. So this is a donut shaped here. So it's capturing it on the outside, bring my tailstock up, clean up this, and be done. Well, here we go. We've got it all nice and sanded and polished up. Let's give you a, a good close-up picture of it here with the natural edge, how I captured that rim where... It's kind of a, a uniform surface around the undulating bark area. has a nice void in it. Okay. I am going to do a similar piece to this in my next live remote demo. And so... Keep an eye on my website for future events. And uh, again, instead of uh, a short little uh, uh, quick review of this, it's going to be two and a half hours live and interactive. So check out my website for listings and uh, hope to see you there. Thanks for watching. Stay safe, have fun, and we'll see you next time.